Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. Crystal will be uh, zooming with us tonight from from home. So, Crystal, when you vote, uh, please announce your name and your how you vote. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're used to it, right? So, first order of business tonight is our is the minutes from January 3rd, 2022. Uh, motion on those. We have a motion made. Aye, right, Crystal Drake Tremblay, second. <laughs> and we have a motion second. All those in favor of acceptance of the January 3rd, 2022 minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's three zero. Next up is the uh, boat ramp application for July 16th, 2022. Jeff, what do you got? Yeah, so we got an application. Uh, group wants to come in from the eastern part of the state. Uh, I think they said four cars, eight boats. Um, um the come in early at, i think it was a, a kayak fishing expedition that they wanted to do um so be they anticipate being done by 2 launching at about 6 a.m and being done by 2 p.m so um just wanted to give people a heads up and and let them know and see if there was any concerns haven't heard anything uh from police or library or uh, yeah. recreation so Jeff, the only thing I would ask is that you ask them to park behind the town hall in the uh, the marked off 11. The, we have, I think, six spots back here. Mm -hmm. If you could uh, ask them to double up into those, park their cars into those, the yellow marked yep. spots, okay? Absolutely. It's good that it's getting used from people in the eastern part of the state. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need <clears throat> anything on that, do nope. we? Okay. All right. The next up is uh, the ARPA discussion. Jeff? Yeah. So on Thursday, the Treasury Department released their final rule on ARPA, which is a 400 plus page behemoth. Um, yeah. But some of the highlights that have started trickling out, or the big highlight that trickled out, is uh, we've been talking a lot about revenue replacement funds and non-revenue replacement funds and and uh, for the people who eyes glaze over when we do that, um, you don't have to worry about it anymore. That's a short story. Uh, the final rule said that instead of actually calculating revenue replacement, they will allow a standard $10 million. We did not get $10 million for Sunderland. We got just over a million, um, but all of it can be used in a more flexible manner under the what the interim final rule said was for revenue replacement so um instead of having to about a third of our funds being for revenue replacement we can use all of it and so that that's the more flexible funds that can be used for schools and police and fire uh, uh, public safety um, basically they said any gen any general government services uh, except for lowering the tax rate or putting it into stabilization funds. And I'm paraphrasing, there are a couple other uh, exceptions, but allows a lot more flexibility for the entirety of the ARPA allotment that we received. All right, so Jeff, all right, you're, gonna, you're gonna get the department heads all together and talk about that? Yeah, yep. Okay, Dave, questions? No, that's, I mean, it makes tracking easier and it still kind of keeps to the short term use concept of it. So, Crystal, any thoughts on ARPA money? Yeah, so when I was looking at the spreadsheet that you sent, Jeff, it just, on that, like when there's like line items that say defibrillator, things like that, could then we just know how many they're talking? Is, you know, is that for one defibrillator, five defibrillators, 20, 
Uh, I get a little confused with, you know, seeing a, a dollar amount and not knowing how many items that's to purchase. Yep. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I will. I, I could absolutely uh, the the cost per item. Yep. Yeah, just because you know sometimes you look at that dollar amount, you might think, well, you know, can we give them four instead of five or something like that? But if we don't know how many it's four, it's kind of hard to. Probably just throw a quantity column in. There. Yeah, I think it was six, but I I will double check. Uh, All right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Anything else on ARPA, Jeff? Uh, j just that the the Capital Planning Committee had had begun discussing at their last meeting. They're meeting again tomorrow night, um, and so I, I sent the information about the more flexible funds. And so I'm sure that discussion will change a little bit. But yeah, um, I, I think that that was the big thing. And then digging into how how we can use it and the reporting requirements then that that'll be the next steps so are, are you looking at at the reporting requirements being less cumbersome than what you originally had thought because now you're not not necessarily putting it into specific categories that is my understanding there there was some discussion uh, that the reporting requirements were lessened um, but to what extent, I don't know. Um, we also have a meeting, I have a meeting, I think it's Wednesday morning with the FERCOG, um, and part of that discussion is going to be whether or not a, an ARPA, uh, reporting person at FERCOG would be helpful to communities and whether that's still necessary, uh, given the, the final rule. Um, so... I, I am sure there will be lots of webinars and information sessions that I'll be attending to learn more about it. The first report isn't due until the end of April, so we have a little bit of time to report on it, but we can um, use those funds for eligible expenses dating back to March of 21. Um, also, I, 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 I was looking under the uh, capital expenses for the police. Um, can, can you talk to the chief about um, body cam as well? Yep. And, and, and see if that's something that he would consider? Yes. I, and I th think that there are grants available, and that may be why there was no capital request. I know he's been considering it, um, but I, I'll talk to him about it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, I, I mean... Even if there's grants, I mean, you may be able to purchase and get reimbursed also for that. So if you could talk to him about that, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you have the capital planning meeting, I, I noticed that you're, you're talking uh, once again about the HVAC upgrades at the fire police public safety just so you know we've done that a hundred thousand we, we've done it many multiple times so I you really got to kind of under understand is somehow and I know it's short notice for you but to understand what was done in the past versus what's going to be done what what they're trying to do differently this time okay it may be beneficial for you to understand all yep. right you mean the the just so i'm clear the the previous um work that was done on the system what did they do to supposedly fix it in the past that hasn't worked because we're back here and what it, what are they doing now that they think is going to work and how is it different yep. and, and, how, and 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 how's it different and and who who's identified these problems you know what i mean yeah. I, I, and again, we, we, do you remember that, David? I mean, we, we, we've done a lot of work on that. And, and for everything from the thing being... It was originally oversized it was like a, originally, right? Huh? It was oversized grossly, I think, originally. Right? Yeah, originally it was like a 15-ton system. It only needed to be a 2-ton system. And then how the fans are controlled. And 
there, there's a number there, there there've been a number of concerns that have been addressed with the HVAC since it's been built so you now and and we have spent money on addressing you know replacing coils yeah, um, yeah. and such so it, it'd be it'd be nice if you had all of that and, and a lot of it was generated through special you know at town meeting warrant articles and also in our capital in our <coughs> capital planning budgets money has been put aside also so it may not be that difficult to 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 list, but mo most of that money has been done through um, expenditures through capital that were at town meeting. It'd be it'd be very interesting, so that I mean we've had grants for from Eversource and other community that that have done efficiency studies, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I'd I'd hate to be going back addressing the same problems continually and not and, and if and if we are if there's still a problem we really have to identify what the problem is and why we think this one's going to be the solution this time okay yep. and and also don't don't forget on the town hall the town office building we're looking at those front steps yep and that floors it's a big thing that the front steps are a big thing yeah. uh you know we it, it's and and also the wood floors they haven't been refinished in in a number of years so we need to we need to look at those yeah. okay well we've been here 20 plus years and i know it hasn't been refinished in 20 years so all right crystal any comments on capital David? I'll be there tomorrow, so. All righty. Um, all right, Jeffrey, why don't we talk about our uh, FY23 budget update? Yep, so uh, department budgets were due today, so those are rolling in. I'm starting to put them in the spreadsheet, and once I have a that mostly filled out um, I'll send it out along with the requests to yourselves in the Finance Committee so they can start reviewing it um, the we the in the me budget request memo um, advised uh, level services budget so not level funded budget but continuing the services that we offer um, and and department heads have been respectful of that which is great and uh so i think starting next tuesday because of the monday holiday we have uh police and fire coming in to present their operating budgets um so we'll have the finance committee in as well and i might suggest that we flip this table around so that the finance committee can be more on screen yeah, i think yeah that's fine um and, and can see the screen but uh yeah and then and then um we have i think every week um except for the school vacation week which i think is february 21st it we're is, gonna yeah. have um one or two in with the exception of the town office building operations where we have a whole crew coming in but we're usually pretty quick yeah um i got it up if you want me to re go oh over. yeah thank you yeah uh, so the january 18th next tuesday we have police and fire january 24th we have town office building excuse me town office department budgets the assessors town clerk treasurer collector board of health select board town admin budgets and then january 31st we have library February 7th, we have Highway. February 14th, we have Franklin County Tech. And like you said, February 21st, that's uh, the holiday, so no meeting that day. And then February 28th or March 14th, tentatively Frontier um, and Sunderland Elementary. I think that it's going to be the 14th. 14th. Um, this is what we're going for for, the, for Frontier and the elementary school. Uh, but I do know, and, and 
Peter and Greg are on so that they can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th I think the first look that the elementary school school committee is getting at their budget is going to be tomorrow night at 6. Okay. Um, so Peter gets to go right from capital planning to I know, he's gonna school committee. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Peter, Peter's going to tell us there's a 10% decrease in the school budget this year. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> Sorry, we haven't had that meeting yet, Tom. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I, I've been talking to Ben um, about stuff, and I'm just uh, so impressed on how they're dealing with all the stuff they're dealing with right now. We're, we're exceptionally lucky to, because I, I, I hear from others that may not be as organized and procedure grounded as Union 38 in Frontier right now. So they, they really are towing their line on their procedures. And so that's, that's a good, it's pretty remarkable how they're doing it. So good. All right, Peter, you want to say anything? Um, no, just thank you. I, I agree with you that uh, they're, they're, they're doing a great job. They're dealing with difficult circumstances. And, and I, uh, um, I sent you a link they have now on their website that they can, uh, uh, you can go there and see all the COVID reporting that's going on and also what the uh, procedures are for, for dealing with cases and so on. And, um, you know, it's useful just to keep yourself informed, and, and this is a hard time because there's a lot of COVID around, and, and uh, but I'm really impressed by how they're doing with it. Yeah, and and just to let people that people know, there's um, are we still part of community testing at UMass? You have me told, right? Uh, I uh, yeah, I think we can go. It's open to the public. Yeah. As far as I know, so. so there there is community testing at UMass, so you just find you can go there, check on that. Um, there's a vaccination clinic Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday? Thursday? I think it's Thursday. In Deerfield. Um, so I have an email someplace about that. So um, and you can you can go to the uh, the. State of Massachusetts Vax Finder that it's, it's on there. There was one last Friday that was supposed to be in Leverett, but that got canceled because of the bad weather. So I'm sure that will be coming back again uh, in in short time. So if you need your if you need a booster or if you decide to get your um, um, vaccination, there are are places coming up uh, in local in the very near future. Um, and I would say just try to be safe on that. Board, I mean, Sunderland does have a mask, indoor mask mandate now. Most of our area communities do have indoor mask mandates as well. Um, so be smart. Just, you know, try to be, and, and they're also recommending that we wear surgical masks like we got now, like, like I'm wearing, more so than the cloth mask or if you have a cloth mask they like it that you have uh filters inside also so okay any anything else peter no that's all thanks tom thank you jeff you uh town administrator updates no i just want to tag along if there's anybody out there on the fence about getting vaccines i mean the latest local numbers that we got about 70 percent of the cases in Sunderland were among un unvaccinated people um, and then of the 30 percent um, the the fewest ha were those that had been boosted so uh, you know maybe, maybe that'll convince somebody else who's on the fence about it that it's worth it but I just wanted to mention that that the data appears to show that uh, if you're 
get the vac vaccinated and boosted, you're less likely to contract COVID. So. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Anything else for uh, Tom Missard updates? No. David, updates? Uh, I have a capital planning meeting tomorrow. And then I have a Union 38 negotiation meeting, negotiation meeting on Wednesday. So. Perfect. Um, just to let everybody know that we the vaccination clinics are coming up. The uh, South County Senior Center Board of Oversight made a recommendation to hire to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen, or I still think there's board a selectman I think they have their board the select board they 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 and they um, um, entered into contract negotiations with the uh, preferred candidate or the first choice um, that person has just declined the uh, position so right now I believe that the board is going to interview the next candidate um, as well so we don't we don't have a new senior center director yet hopefully we will have one shortly um, it was a basically was an issue surrounding compensation so the the one thing with Deerfield is they have a very structured um, uh, pay scale and that position is slotted uh, actually I think competitively slotted and the person could not uh, make the numbers work for her so we'll, we'll go to uh, the next choice we were lucky that we had three very good candidates so we'll talk to the uh, the next candidate as well I don't have any third further crystal you have any uh, comments this evening? Select board updates? No. Okay. So, unless any Jeff wants to remind me that uh, to announce that Monday the town offices are closed due to Martin Luther King right. in day observance. So Monday is uh, the town hall will be closed. Our next meeting will be on Tuesday, January 18th, where we will start our budget process. Scott Bergeron's favorite time of the year. Uh -huh. And we will be dealing with police and fire, Jeffrey? Yes. We'll be talking with police and fire. Public safety night. Yeah, it's a fun time of the year. All right, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, Second. And motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. We have a 3 0, Jeff. Uh, let's declare us out at 654.